More Americans watch NBC News than any other news organization in the world. 12 stands for local news. And now, from Arizona's number one choice for local news, this is 12 News at 6. New at 6, checking your checking account. I was being charged $48.79 per month for somebody that I didn't even know who they were. Call 12 for Action explains why you need to double check your bank statement. Governor Napolitano fires back to critics who call her a bully. Her one-liner straight ahead. Arizona tribal leaders are recommending a new name for this park, but it's not Paestiwa. I'm Mary Kim Tetla. I'll tell you what name they're recommending coming up. And another twist in the Bishop O'Brien case, why his defenders are trying to buy more time. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mark Curtis. And I'm Faye Fredericks. New developments tonight in the case of Bishop Thomas O'Brien, the former leader of the Phoenix Catholic Diocese. He's accused of leaving the scene of a deadly accident back in June. Seven months later, his case is now days away from going to trial. But O'Brien's lawyers want more time, and they're claiming they deserve it because of comments made by one person. Rich Dubik is at Superior Court to explain. Rich? Faye, this pretrial hearing was supposed to start this morning at 10.30, but it did not start until 1.30. When it finally took place, the defense presented Judge Stephen Gerst with a newspaper article from this morning's Arizona Republic, and one paraphrased comment from Rick Romley made in a press conference yesterday. The defense spent two hours arguing that this one comment in the morning paper should delay the trial and possibly leave the bishop searching for a new attorney. The bishop's lead defense attorney, Tom Hensey, argued that statements made by County Attorney Rick Romley yesterday hinted there could be obstruction of justice charges brought against Hensey for failing to immediately report evidence of a so-called second car involved in the hit-and-run accident where Bishop Thomas O'Brien is charged with leaving the scene. That matter is still being looked at, however... Hensey and his law firm argued that a possible charge brought against him compromised their client, Bishop O'Brien. He has the right, given what has happened, to have fulsome, meaningful consultation with a lawyer as to what his rights are and how he should exercise them. But prosecutor Tony Novinsky argued it doesn't matter. He says the second car was not involved in the incident. We do not believe, based on investigation, that that car had anything to do with the death of Jim Reed. Judge Stephen Gers sided with the prosecution and moved this trial full steam ahead. Today's proceedings may indicate a long and tedious trial ahead for the former leader of the Phoenix Catholic Diocese. In Phoenix, Rich Dubeck, 12 News. Another pretrial hearing is scheduled for tomorrow. The judge is expected to hear a change of venue motion by the defense. She's been labeled a bully and a dictator. Tonight, Governor Janet Napolitano responds to criticism. Yesterday, Maricopa County attorney Rick Romley compared her leadership to a tyranny. But her supporters say she's the best thing to ever happen to Arizona. Joe Dana spoke with the governor today and tells us what she had to say. Joe? Mark, there are some lawmakers here at the Capitol, granted Republican lawmakers, who would agree with Romley's opinion. Now, the governor herself said she's always considered herself a tough negotiator, and today she's giving no apologies. I must say, um, I'm a bit concerned, you know, in the way that Janet has handled this last year. From one respected Arizona leader to another, some biting criticism. I believe that leadership is more than just the tyranny of forcing your way upon doing business. Today, the governor was asked about Romley's comments that she's a bully, alienating herself from other leaders in Arizona. I, I'm just not going to respond to that. I am who I am. Thank you, Papa. She is a governor known for taking charge of a billion-dollar deficit, who forced lawmakers, some reluctantly, into a CPS special session late last year. And there is the naming of Paestua Peak, pushed through by the governor's office many years faster than protocol. I think that the governor is one of the strongest, most um, tough politicians we have seen in, in well over a decade in Arizona. The director of a political think tank in Arizona says he expects these kinds of comments from the opposing party. The governor has certainly been criticized before for that kind of style, but I think this is something that we can predict from any candidate who's going to come along. Romley says he'll consider running for governor in 2006. As for the governor's thoughts of running against Romley? You know, I'm kind of busy right now. In Phoenix, Joe Dana, 12 News. 
Our Voice of the Valley poll asked 500 people if they think Napolitano has been a bully during her first year in office. 41% said yes, 45% said no, 15% were unsure. As for County Attorney Romley, 48% said they would love to see him run for governor in 2006, 35% would not like to see him run, 18% were unsure. Survey USA conducted the poll. New details are emerging tonight about the man police say murdered a couple in their own bed. The man and woman were found inside their home near 83rd Avenue in Peoria. Benjamin Cota is behind bars. Police say he was hired to do construction work at the home. In depth tonight, Kim Holcomb spoke to Cota's brother about the accused murderer's past. Kim? Faye, Ben Cota's brother says they don't have a lot of contact, but they have seen each other since December 30th. That is during the time frame that police believe this couple was killed. Cota's brother says he didn't think anything was wrong, but he admits the family doesn't know what to think of the charges against him. No, this is a shock to us all, oh, honestly. George Cota says he hasn't talked to his brother Ben since police arrested him on two counts of murder, accused of killing a couple inside their Peoria home. It, it surprised us all, you know, and uh, we, don't, we don't know what to think. Cota's mother lives in this small Tolleson house where police say they found bloodstained clothing belonging to the suspect. Even so, George can't believe the charges, saying his brother isn't capable of such violence. He's not. That's why we're surprised. He's not, he's not a violent person. So we don't, we don't know anything about what happened, honestly. But he admits Coda has been in trouble before. Problems with drugs, recently released from prison. Court records show he worked on the murdered couple's home for about a month. They owed him $2,000 for the job. But his brother maintains payback wouldn't lead him to kill. I don't know if he had anything to do with it, but he's not the type of person that would do something like this. Kim Holcomb, 12 News. New at 6, it's one of the most well-known spots in the valley. But Squaw Peak Park could soon be getting a new name and it may not be named after fallen soldier Lori Paestua. Mary Kim Titla tells us about this latest name game. Those who like to ride their bikes here and those who'd rather hike with precious cargo are just now getting used to the name Paestua Peak. I don't see it as a negative change at all. Whether to rename the park next to the peak hit a snag last month when an advisory board couldn't agree on a name change. Many Native Americans consider the word squaw derogatory and want the park renamed Paestiwa Peak Park. But now tribal leaders on the Salt River Indian Reservation are recommending a name in the Pima language, Vinam Dwag Park. It means Iron Mountain and historically to our people, the mountain is a sacred mountain. Years ago, members of the tribe unsuccessfully pushed to have the peak renamed Iron Mountain. Now, other Arizona tribal leaders have joined their cause to have the park renamed in the Pima language, including the Hopi tribe, of which Lori Paestiwa was a member. Salt River tribal leaders say they're not opposed to the name Paestiwa. They say if that's what the advisory board chooses, that's okay too. If that is the only choice we have, then yes, we will support that. But however, we would definitely want the Vinum Dwag, the Iron Mountain uh, Recreational Park to be the number one choice. I think that gives us a, a really great opportunity to learn a little bit about um, Native American language. Mary Kim Titla, 12 News. The Special Advisory Committee will meet tomorrow night to discuss the new name. It will then make a recommendation to the Phoenix Parks and Rec Board, which does have the final say. Still ahead, new at 6, new information about the K-State quarterback accused of raping a woman while in town for the Fiesta Bowl. Next, what he told police happened that night. And Call 12 for Action explains what to do if you find something wrong when double-checking your checking account. And why the Big Red Cardinals may soon be seeing green. Details straight ahead. Hey there, everyone. I'm Bill Kelly in the 12 News Forecast Center. The week's half over and still some great weather to come. What does your Thursday and the weekend look like? Details are straight ahead. The first RV show of the year is going on right now at the Peoria Sports Complex. See what 2004 has in store. It's the biggest, it's the best. Each day from 9 a.m. till dark, you'll see millions and millions of dollars worth of brand new and used RVs on display. And financing, it's right there. And it's never been lower. 2.99% financing or make no payments and pay no interest for one full year. The first RV show of the year at the Peoria Sports Complex is going on right now. This is the Rob and Stucky sale of winter with great savings on the best names in furniture. Only at Rob and Stucky, America's leader. 
I'm proud to be an Arizona Diamondback. I'm even more proud to be a parent. Talk to your kids about the dangers of drugs, because drugs destroy dreams. When you think of a classic, what comes to mind? Something timeless, traditional, enduring. Like Village Inn's classic skillets. We start with a bed of country potatoes, add delicious ingredients, and top it off with two scrambled eggs. Enjoy Skillet Classic starting at $4.99. When you're hungry for the meals that you've always loved, think of a classic. Think of Village Inn. Good food, good feelings. Village Inn. Tomorrow morning on 12 News Today... They fly through the air with the greatest of ease, and tomorrow we'll take you live to Bank One Ballpark for a preview of the big motocross extravaganza. Plus, see the plan that's trying to get drug offenders to spend more time in rehab instead of jail. Plus, why you may get an extra paycheck this year. Make sure you wake up with 12 News Today and The Today Show. She used to tutor L. Roberson at K-State University, but she told police she never had a sexual relationship with him before she claims he assaulted her. The K-State quarterback has a different story. He says the woman said nothing when they had sex at the team's Paradise Valley Hotel early New Year's morning. According to a Paradise Valley police report, the woman originally thought Roberson was another team member who she had already had consensual sex with twice that night. Roberson claims the woman knew it was him and even greeted him before they had sex. The Maricopa County Attorney's Office tells 12 News it could make a decision on whether to charge Roberson later this week. Prosecutors plan to seek the death penalty against two men if they're convicted of killing a Cincinnati Reds ball player. Durnell Stinson was found shot in the head and the chest November 5th in Chandler. He was here for the fall baseball league. Reginald Riddle and David Griffith are charged with first degree murder. Well, roads around town and heading out of the valley will be closed this weekend. It's going to be rough. We'll tell you where. Plus, I'm called 12 for Action's Rick DeBrule with a reminder about why you need to check those banking account statements and what to do if you find a mistake. And President Bush unveils sweeping immigration changes ahead. Why some people in Phoenix say he's knifing his supporters in the back. <sighs> B.U., isn't she? Yeah. So what kind of deal do I have to make to send you home and this baby today? How about a buck? A buck? Yeah. Let me talk to my sales manager. Stevens Furniture would like to help fulfill your vision of home. Our level of customer service begins with designers who create an ambiance that is uniquely suited to your personality and lifestyle. Explore unique selections from Stevens' collection of finely crafted Spanish colonial, Tuscan, and classical furniture that will add warmth and textures to all your living spaces. Open your home to Stevens. Stevens Furniture, previously located in Phoenix. Come visit our new showroom at 7175 East Lincoln Drive in Scottsdale. You already know you want a BMW. Chapman BMW of Scottsdale at 64th Street in McDowell is the oldest and most trusted BMW dealership in Arizona. New 2004 Chapman BMW Z4s. Lease one today for only $3.99 a month with automatic CD and power top. Or choose a Chapman BMW 325iA loaded with moonroof, CD, and automatic from only $2.99 a month. Now make the Chapman choice. Conveniently located west of the 101 at 6601 East McDowell in Scottsdale. What makes a team good? It's about more than just scoring touchdowns or winning the bid to host the 2008 Super Bowl. It's proving that they care about helping people week after week, month after month, year after year. Giving back to the community is a way of life for the Arizona Cardinals, a commitment embraced by the entire organization. Go Cardinals! Go yeah. Cardinals! Yeah. Go Cardinals! The Cardinals care about Arizonans, and that's why Arizonans care about them. It's about precision. It's about balance and a moment frozen in time that takes your breath away. Smuckers, stars on ice featuring Olympic and world champions. Introducing Time, a new theatrical adventure produced by Scott Hamilton. Special guest stars, Oksana Bayul and Kurt Browning. January 15th, America West Arena. 
Continuing coverage now on Operation Iraqi Freedom. 35 American soldiers are injured after six mortar rounds struck their living quarters. It happened in an area in, near Baghdad known as the Sunni Triangle, where many Iraqis remain loyal to Saddam Hussein. The wounded are from the Army's 541st Maintenance Battalion. A Pentagon source says some have been hospitalized while others have returned to duty. A sweeping immigration policy change proposed by the president is being called political pandering by some. President Bush officially unveiling the policy in D.C. today. It would give undocumented immigrants legal status with a three-year work visa that would be renewable. It also establishes a job registry. Locally, people on both sides of the issue fear the new plan comes down to politics. And uh, what we need here, not only in Arizona, but across our country, is a comprehensive immigration reform and not just political posturing. Well, he is in some kind of insatiable quest for Hispanic votes he's never going to get. And in this process, he has knifed his base support in the back. As a result of the program, President Bush also hopes to increase the number of slots for immigrants seeking citizenship. Well, these days you have to watch your bank statements very carefully. It's easy for a company to take money out of your account and hard to get it back. Call 12 for Action's Rick DeBrule tells us about one viewer who needed help solving that problem. Rick? Well, Mark, the problem is that a lot of banks have taken the attitude that all a company needs to take money out of your account is something called a routing number. They assume that, well, you must have given it to them, and you have to battle to prove you didn't. Mm -hmm. Joanne Lorenz takes great care with her garden. Now, this tree is beautiful when it uh, blooms. She knows how to prune and clip to make it just right. Her bank account, however, is a different story. Last year, a debit started showing up every month that she didn't understand. Here it is, Freedom Star, $48.79. A company she'd never heard of was taking the money directly out of her account. Went right to the bank to try to stop payment and they said that they could not do it because it came from an authorization, you know, from this company. Well, our bank was wrong. It is obligated to stop the debits if you don't want them to happen. Well, Joanne called 12 for action. We helped her figure out that Freedom Star is a long distance company. Somehow, Joanne had been signed up for a calling card. And I thank you because uh, if, if I hadn't called you yesterday, I wouldn't have known what to do. Since Joanne had never used the calling card, Freedom Star refunded all the fees paid since June. That means $300 in her pocket and a lesson for next time. Do your research and do it right away. As soon as you see something on your account that was taken out without you knowing what it is, find out. And that's a reminder that you need to watch those statements every month. Make sure there are no unauthorized debits or charges. And don't believe it when your bank says that it can't stop a company from taking money out of your account. If you've got a consumer problem, call 12 for Action. Our volunteers here Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Call 602-260-1212. Rick DeBrule, 12 News. All right, don't shoot the messenger, okay? But you can expect I-10 to be like a parking lot this weekend. ADOT says drivers going between Phoenix and Tucson will experience hour-long delays. Starting Friday night until Monday morning, the freeway will be shut down south of Chandler between Queen Creek and Maricopa Roads. Workers are scheduled to tear down a bridge. And be prepared for roadblocks all around town on Sunday. At least 28,000 people will be running through the streets of Phoenix, Scottsdale, and Tempe as part of the P.F. Chang's Rock and Roll Marathon. Major streets, including Central Avenue, Camelback, 44th Street, McDowell, Washington, Hayden, and University will be closed for much of the day. Get a complete rundown of the street closures and marathon entertainment at azcentral.com. Of course, our weather will be much better than it's going to be in Siberia, I would guess. Yeah, dozens of people brave five-degree temperatures to run the annual Orthodox Christmas Half Marathon. That's 13. Look at this guy. <laughs> One native took the cold weather in stride, stripped down to his shorts. You know, I see these stories about people swimming in the cold water and yep. doing this. And right. And you think, that's what I need to do. No, I don't think that. You know, that. shockingly, you don't I, I don't think I that think either. Better no. them than me is what I think. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, if you're going to run like that, why take your clothes off? Why? That, I don't get that. But that's maybe why we don't do it, because we just don't get it. <laughs> take a look at our numbers outside. 66, or rather 64 degrees right now. Very comfortable. 27 is the dew point. Some west winds at 5 miles per hour. 25% relative humidity. Much colder up there around Seattle, where today they got pounded again with winter weather. Take a look at this video. It, they had 120,000 customers 
without power after freezing rain, took down power lines, took down some trees. And uh, again, people just trying to uh, do the simple task of walking makes it very difficult when the weather is like that. We here in Arizona have nothing to complain about. 68 degrees, that was our high today. After a morning low of 45, brr, it's chilly. 66 is the normal high, so we are right, uh, right around there, just two degrees warmer. The record 79 degrees, and it was 57 in Sedona, 44 for the Grand Canyon, 37 for Page and Tucson today at 70 degrees. Most of the state had cloud cover, and right now picking up a few light returns, Pinal County also into Pima County, but most of this not reaching the ground. It's just a little bit of a weak weather system that's moving its way through, but it is going to be moving out of here. We're going to see some high pressure build in. Clouds extending right up the Rocky Mountains where there's periods of snow throughout much of Wyoming. Idaho and into Montana as well. And speaking of snow, lake effect snows into the, of course, the lee side of the lake as it's moving its way on over. And down into the south, conditions are very nice. So that's a quick look at your national uh, forecast there, at least your national currents. Those of you who are visiting, you look back home in the Great Lakes and say, man, I'm glad I'm not there. Be glad to be here because we have high pressure in the area and that's going to remain. We start the warm up tomorrow with a high into the 70s. By this weekend, we're into the middle 70s with sunshine as this weather system moves its way off to the north. Things are looking great. So for tonight, decreasing clouds, mild temperatures, 46 degrees. Tomorrow's high, 73. Doesn't that sound nice? Mostly sunny conditions. A little bit warmer. And then how about a 75, 76, 75 for you for Friday, Saturday, Sunday? I, I really, I, I can't. Imagine weather being more perfect. No, I, I think about all those winter visitors out here. Mm -hmm. They're loving it. Yeah, well, hey. loving it. <laughs> and the Cardinals are loving life tonight. They got their man. He was a winner in Minneapolis. Now can Dennis Green turn the Cardinals around? I'll have details coming up. Just think of us as a giant dressing room for your home. Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. How low can we go? Find out during the final markdown at Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. Get low clearance prices on select home furnishings. Hurry, prices won't be this low much longer. At Cliff Castle Casino, we're always happy to see you, and we'll make you feel right at home. He took classes at night to get into medical school, worked in an emergency room in the Bronx, and with his wife Judy, Howard Dean became a family doctor, hoping to make a difference one life at a time. He became governor under the worst of circumstances and earned a reputation as a maverick and independent by turning a deficit into a surplus, creating jobs, raising the minimum wage twice, and balancing budgets 11 years in a row. And while Washington talked, Howard Dean provided health care coverage for nearly every child in his state and a prescription drug benefit for seniors. Now he's running for president to repeal the Bush tax cuts, restore a foreign policy that reflects American values, and break the special interest gridlock to provide health insurance for every American. We can stop the special interests, but not without your help. I'm Howard Dean, and I approve this ad because the truth is, the power to change this country is in your hands, not mine. NBC Tonight is all new, starting with Ed. The wedding plans have begun, and the event you've waited for... You want all hope? ...maybe sooner than you think. Then it's the West Wing's 100th episode. John Goodman is back as a civil war erupts in the Middle East. This has never happened before. Then an all-new Law & Order, hit by a car and left for dead. But the secret to this murder is hiding in his brain. How cool is that? Ed, The West Wing, and Law & Order. All new NBC Tonight. 12 News closed captioning is brought to you by Cadillac. We first told you last night Dennis Green is the guy the Cardinals wanted, and tonight it looks like they have him. The Cardinals and Green have agreed in principle to a four-year, $10 million deal. Details are still being worked out, and the Cardinals have not officially announced anything yet, but if those numbers are true, it'll be a lot more than the Cardinals normally pay a head coach. But then again, this is Dennis Green, a proven winner. Earlier today, I asked Randy Shaver, who did the Dennis Green show up in Minneapolis, what he thinks about Green. 
he's a perfect guy for the job because Denny loves to be the underdog. He loves to be the guy that no one thinks they can win, backs to the wall, that kind of guy, and they win and he becomes the hero. So this job, in my opinion, is perfect for Denny. Meanwhile, you would have thought they just won the Super Bowl the way the fans were celebrating in Washington today with the news that the Redskins had hired Joe Gibbs to come back for a second run as coach. Gibbs left the team after the 1992 season to run a highly successful NASCAR team. Dan Snyder had to pay him through the nose to get him. Five years, $25 million. But a couple of former Redskins think it's an incredible move. I didn't see him getting back in. I thought he was having, you know, a lot of fun doing the racing, but maybe that wasn't quite, you know, filling his life the way he wanted to, or that's fine, but he kind of wanted to get back into football. Well, FedEx Field's the largest, largest venue in football, over 85,000 people. Now it'll be filled again. For the next six months, people are going to talk about the Redskins because of Joe Gibbs. I believe, I, I thought there would be a point when they could stop paying these kind of numbers, but I'm not sure that it's ever going to stop. All right, check out his resume. During his tenure, the Redskins won three Super Bowls, and even more impressive, Gibbs was 16-5 and five in the playoffs. By the way, he was also 20-4 and four against the Cardinals, if you're scoring, but then again, the Cardinals didn't have Dennis Green. Gibbs just wins wherever he goes. His NASCAR team has won two of the last four Winston Cup titles. While well, the ongoing saga of the Nebraska Cornhuskers' search for a new coach continues, today they interviewed recently fired Raiders coach Bill Callahan. The Huskers have already been turned down by their first three choices, but they're missing the boat if they don't at least talk to Dave McGinnis. Much like Pete Carroll at USC, I think Mac would make a perfect college coach. Well, the Suns are just underway in Milwaukee. All three of the members of the team, the new members of the team, are in uniform, but none started the game. We'll have highlights for you at 10 o'clock. Suns might make a move for Kobe during the offseason, but first, Kobe has to survive tonight's game against the Nuggets in Denver. Brian is playing in Denver for the first time this season. As a precaution, security will be increased for the game. And finally, Wimbledon has been keeping official stats for a long time, but not just for wins and losses. They also keep track of the weather. Listen to this, Bill. Since 1908, the tournament's been played without rain only six times. Hmm. So finally, the All England Club is going to build a retractable roof over center court. Now understand, this kind of thing doesn't happen at Tradition Rich Wimbledon that often. Major construction on the main stadium is the equivalent of painting the White House blue. The roof will be ready for play in 2009. That'd be a sight, wouldn't it? What are they going to do with all those umbrellas? There you go. <laughs> all right. Well, they'll just Thanks. carry it. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for 12 News. We'll see you back here at 10 o'clock. News, Arizona's most watched news, can be seen weeknights at 6.30 on Pax TV, Channel 51, Cable 17.